Thank you guys, especially Alan. You might have heard of War Week. That's not the only time Warwick has been completely broken. He first leapt onto the Convergence in set one. Basically as a glorified wild trait bot. Between Nidalee and Warwick, there was this glorious period where playing RFC Rageblade Nidalee was considered breaking the Geneva Convention. Meanwhile, Warwick was just kind of there. Like, he just existed and sometimes jumped at people. No one really bothered to put items on him because, let's be honest, back then Mort wasn't game director so items were kind of rare so you couldn't beg for his blessings like you do today. In set 2, Warwick made a return. He was back to being a trait bot. This time though, he was teaming up with Cogmore and Skarner to form the infamous Predator Trio. Now if you played back then, you'll remember how obnoxious this comp was to go against. I mean, if you think Syndra is bad, just imagine everyone rolling to zero at three, two, trying to hit these units. And I mean, Warwick was just, he's kind of like that guy that you didn't invite to the party but showed up anyway thinking he's important. But then he came back in set four and this is the moment that people are waiting for. This was Warwick's set. But what if I told you his debut was less King Energy and more Lost Puppy in the Woods? Because the first couple of patches were rough. Like trying to not roll all your gold at level eight because you missed kind of rough. The vine was so bad that it basically needed an immediate rework. And then that's exactly what happened. First, they reworked Shiv to basically give bonus true damage on CC targets. Because, you know, why not, right? That's, that's a cool idea. And then they reworked Divine to basically cleanse CC once you drop below a certain health or you attacked enough times. And then they had Warwick, who every time he got a takedown would CC any target that was nearby. So you put a Shiv on him and probably a QSS. He attacks a bunch of times, gets ascended. He'll take down a unit. Next thing you know, he's going full Terminator mode, running through the enemy team like he's on a cocaine binge on a Thursday afternoon. Suffice to say, it was patched out pretty sharpish. Sending that poor puppy back to the vet and giving him the old Gwen Q. <laughs> Sapphire was another wild ride for Warwick and oh man, those were the days. Back then, Archangels was a stack on ability cast item and Warwick was basically the Energizer Bunny on steroids. Every time he got a takedown, he'd jump from one target to another. And that's the beautiful thing. Every leap counted towards an Archangel stack, mowing down everything in his path like a lawnmower that just got stronger with each kill. This is probably the most fun and definitely the most absurd Warwick comp of all time. Needless to say, Archangel's Warwick gave Riot the old spook and as such he didn't return for 5.5. They brought him back in set 6 and introduced a new flavour of Warwick. This time, he kinda missed the mark. He was back being a trusty trait bot for Challenger and Zorn, hanging out in the background while the real stars took the spotlight. People did theorycraft some Warwick builds, hoping to discover the next big thing, but he just didn't have that oomph to take a lead and run with him. Still, if you snagged him early enough, he was a great item carrier, and those first few stages were pretty fun, even if it did only last 30 seconds, but you know, it's still longer than me. But with 6.5, he bucked that trend and came swinging for the fences, like truly frothing at the mouth to be useful once more. And useful is not the word to describe him, becoming one of the most oppressive rerolls of the set, abusing QSS, Titans, and Rageblade, transcended and got close, not quite, to his set four state. It took three patches of Nurse before the he'd even get close to muzzling him. And then he kinda faded away for seven and 7.5, because Warwick doesn't quite fit the dragon theme at all, does he? 8.5 saw Warwick return as a forecast once more. He had his moments of absolute insanity, but there were times when he felt like he was just being dragged around because he was just a trade bot again. Like, you know, like the guy that kind of shows up to a group project but doesn't really contribute. Mainly because Oxforce and other metacoms were kind of keeping him chained up. Laser Core was a blast to play around, turning Warwick into a sort of guide dog for infinite laser and, and orchestrating drone attacks like an American. Nope that joke might be a little bit too dark. And with the right admin, you could definitely make him work. And of course, on takedown, he'd definitely do his old leapfrog shenanigans all over again. I mean, it was fun. It just wasn't peak Warwick. And then set nine, you can't have a rune terror set without Warwick, can you? This is just not possible. Warwick is rune terror for the most part. One of the oldest champions, of course he's gonna be featured. And he was in a ton of reroll builds. He was just a solid two cost reroll that you could eke out a few top fours with. Nothing so crazy, the Juggernaut trait made him a bit tankier, but the Zorn Smash could really elevate him, especially with Robotic Arm, which removed his attack speed cap. And with a Rage Blade or two, Warwick could hit some nutty numbers. And 9.5 not happened, and there are only two words, Ravenous Hunter. Oh boy, 
That augment was insane. Like completely batshit insane. It didn't work in nine because it was it was kind of weak. But if you think set four board was strong, then this augment took him to another dimension entirely. There was only one issue. You need a three star Warwick, insane items, think like QSS Titans of Rage Blade again, and a bit of luck. And maybe a good swarm as well. But if you hit all of this, and you went against someone that didn't have a lot of upfront damage. It was the freest first of your life. Your robot ones are always something amazing. And this is no exception. And that once he hit that ascended level, there was nothing that could stop him. He was literally a god. And here we are in set 12, where Warwick has become a scaling one-star unit, kind of like set 10 Yasuo's long-lost hairy cousin. And with a few buffs on the horizon, I'm really curious to see where he'll land before the set wraps up. I'm betting he'll have at least one patch where he's f absolutely fucking insane. In the meantime, give him a vamp scepter and a few other items and he's pretty solid. It's just a shame he's currently overshadowed by Syndra. But if you're watching this in the future, let me know if I got anything right. And if I didn't, tell me as well. And while you're there, consider liking and subscribing. So where do I rate Warwick in comparison to other units? And this will be a progressive thing over time I will do every single champion. Real quickly, I'll just breeze through Syndra and Nunu because I didn't do it in my previous videos. For Nunu, I am going to say for his thematic, Nunu is amazing. I do want them to try different Nunu ideas, not just biting. I'd love to see his ultimate from Summoner's Rift. But in terms of thematic, I give him a solid 6 out of 10. In terms of carry potential, well, that's a definite 10 out of 10. And my own personal enjoyment, I give him a snowball's chance in hell. And what about Syndra? Well, Syndra, in terms of thematic, I think she's kind of boring. I give her a 2 out of 10. In terms of carry potential, ooh, she can go to the fucking moon. So I'll give her a solid 9 out of 10 there. And in terms of my own personal enjoyment, I'm going to give her a nice 1 out of 9 orbs. But what about the star of the show? My boy, Warwick. His thematic in all of his sets, well, he's had an amazing thematic every time he's been. He's had some excellent fantasies and he's been a fun unit to play around. His League of Legends kit, made, built around making him fast and hunting weak enemies, just feels so fun, especially when you have like leaf troll mechanics. It just makes him seem interesting and kind of cool in a really weird way. What about carry potential? I don't think Warwick will ever be a five cost. His kit just doesn't work for it. But I'd be interested to see them try. It's just better to have him as a lower cost and make him a strong reroll. And what about my personal enjoyment? I'll give him a solid nine doggy biscuits out of 10. Sorry, a bit danger, I kind of copied you there, didn't I? But if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also consider joining my membership if you really want to, but there's no pressure. And also consider clicking on the next video.